when this weak, pathetic man that you saw at a debate just a few months ago, that if he weren't in that debate, he'd be running instead of her. She got no votes. He got 14 million votes. What you did, you talk about a threat to democracy. He got 14 million votes and they threw him out of office. And you know what? I'll give you a little secret. He hates her. He can't stand her. But he got 14 million votes. They threw him out. She got zero votes. And when she ran, she was the first one to leave because she failed. And now she's running. I don't understand it, but I'm okay with it because your time is up. I think we're going to do very well. We've got a lot more to get to. All right, folks. So we obviously just wrapped up that presidential debate. And since everyone's going to give their take on it, I figure I might as well give mine overall thoughts. I'm doing this basically live. So this is not like pre-prepared monologue or anything. Just initial thoughts. I gave it a couple minutes to think. And here's my overall review of everything you saw tonight. So, folks, if you enjoy the content, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you are new okay fresh kind of live off the cuff thoughts over that debate first of all gotta point out i'm sure everyone knows this by now but those moderators huh on abc how unbelievably biased were they i think they interrupted trump or tried to quote unquote fact check him about 11 times did you ever see them try to do that for kamala harris absolutely not now i'm not really here to sit there and complain because What did we expect? It's ABC. I think that the CNN debate was kind of an anomaly in terms of how unbiased they were. Okay, I think this is basically what we expect from the mainstream media. But any review of that debate would not be honest if I didn't first point out the moderators were debating on behalf of Kamala Harris. But that said, okay, what is my actual take on the debate? And I think most importantly, it doesn't matter if I think he won or not. It matters how we believe this will be perceived with the American people, right? How much will this impact the election? And let me be clear when I do this, I'm trying to be as objective as possible, right? I don't think it ultimately matters what the Republicans or Democrats say. The question is, how is this going to impact the election? That's what's on everyone's minds. And my honest, once again, fair and objective take on this is I don't really think it made a difference, right? This debate you saw tonight regardless of whether Democrats say they won or Republicans say they won, will not have a substantial impact in how people feel about Trump or Kamala and what ultimately will happen in the 2024 election. And there are very specific reasons I say that beyond the simple fact that actually, usually, unless you have something like Biden on June 27th, normally these debates do not make the biggest difference. But again, the specific reasons I say that is, I mean, first of all, you want to talk about the temperament of each candidate. So let's just kind of break that down, right? Who was Kamala Harris tonight? Well, she certainly sounded, I guess, a lot more intelligent than she did in, for instance, that CNN interview. But at the same time, you could also make the case it was incredibly rehearsed and that much was obvious. She did come off as relatively polished, but she also came off as incredibly fake. And by the way, just pretentious as normal. I mean, that's what we expect from from Kamala Harris. But I would be remiss if I didn't point out. Her voice is just annoying, right? She just talks like that typical English teacher that nobody liked in school. So that's Kamala Harris on one side. Kind of had the benefits to her tonight. Did decent, but didn't blow it out of the water. Her weaknesses are still her weaknesses. But then on the flip side, I look at Trump and I say he definitely was very high energy tonight. And he was certainly aggressive, for sure. But on the flip side, you could say, oh, but some people might perceive that as hostile. And you could also point out, well, at times he didn't necessarily answer a whole lot of questions, right? He didn't stay on topic, although in fairness, Kamala Harris also did not answer a lot of questions. And everything she did answer was platitudes, right? You went into tonight wondering what is Kamala Harris's campaign platform? Will you leave tonight? Still not knowing Kamala Harris's campaign platform. But what ultimately is the point I am making here? Well, it is to say, I think both candidates scored some points. Both candidates also missed some opportunities. We'll talk more about that in a second. But perceptionally, the reason I say I don't think it's going to have the biggest overall difference on the election itself is obviously Democrats think they won, Republicans think they won. But even, I would argue, with some undecided voters, I'll tell you the reason why I think this debate is going to be perceived very differently among certain demographic groups. So, the counter-argument against Trump tonight is obviously going to be what? Well, 
the fact that he was aggressive, the fact that he had a strong demeanor is not going to be well perceived by suburban women, right? Middle aged women, the very demographic that they always say Donald Trump struggles with. Now, I will say I think that is largely true, right? I think that tonight the way they're going to perceive Trump's performance is kind of hostile, angry, aggressive, maybe even scary, etc. And that's absolutely true, right? Suburban women would probably say if you were to poll them, even the undecideds, that Kamala Harris won the debate tonight. But before you look at that and say, OK, well, Trump screwed himself over with this debate, didn't he? That's only one aspect of the American electorate. The counter argument I would make, you know, on the other side of this is that how do you think, for instance, working class white men perceive that tonight? Because, yes, suburban women are looking at it and saying he's so mean, he's a bully, blah, blah, blah. But on the flip side, let's not forget who is Kamala Harris really struggling with in a key demographic for this election? It is the Rust Belt. It is those white working class, especially male voters in states like Pennsylvania that in 2020 did a little better for Biden, allegedly at least, than Hillary Clinton. And that made the difference. Well, I think tonight Trump really being aggressive and all that. Right. I think a lot of, again, white working class guys are going to look at it and say, I'm very happy he went after her. He got her. You know, that was kind of high testosterone, alpha male kind of Chad performance. And that's the way they're going to see it. So, again, this all comes back to the very idea that this debate is going to be perceived very drastically different by different demographic groups. And so I think it's dishonest and it's kind of just propaganda to say objectively, Trump's going to win the election because of this or Kamala's going to win the election because of this. Largely, when you break it down, it was a draw when it comes to the difference this will ultimately make on the election. And that's just the reality. OK, people might not like that. OK, people might get mad at me. They're saying, no, Trump did better than you're saying or Kamala, whatever. Let's be real. That's probably the truth is how people felt about Donald Trump going in still the way they feel about Donald Trump for the people who did not really have an opinion on Kamala Harris going in because she just um, has not really defined herself. Well, did we really learn a whole lot about Kamala Harris tonight? Maybe that she's capable of standing on a debate stage. But what did we learn about her platform? All she said were platitudes. It's just whatever. Honestly, to me, it's just whatever. Now, that said, I think on the issues, once again, uh, both candidates scored some points. Both candidates lost or failed to score some points. I really thought that, for instance, Kamala Harris we will start with her on the abortion subject, which should have been a slam dunk for her. She really didn't handle that well. Or in fairness, I think Trump really handled well because, you know, kind of failed to make that the runaway issue for her. But then on the flip side, I would also say, especially on immigration, I thought that Trump just could have done a lot better. You know, he, he could have just scored a lot more points there, failed to do so. So this is why, I again, say I don't think this made a big difference because both candidates scored some points. Both candidates also missed some opportunities. Yes, that does include Donald Trump. But I think perhaps the one big advantage that Trump may be able to walk away from this debate having is regardless of what you think about each candidate's temperament. Oh, Trump was too angry. He was too unhinged, whatever. Here's the point, though, is that you know what Trump really had that Kamala Harris did not? The memorable one liners. And people may say, OK, what's the big deal about that? Well, when you go back and look at presidential debates, that's usually the, the defining moment, right? 2016, very similar to this, by the way. I would say that this personality that you saw on stage from Trump tonight, aggressive, whatever you want to say about it, closest to, to 2016 Trump as you could possibly get. This reminded me almost exactly of the Trump-Hillary debates. But what was the defining aspect in that? You know, of, if you want to look back at that election year, it was the fact that Trump had the iconic one liners, did he not? Because you'll be in jail, et cetera, et cetera. And he certainly scored those tonight. Whereas Kamala Harris, does anyone really remember anything she said? Right. You might remember the overall vibes, but can anyone look at me and truly, you know, just from off the top memory, remember one thing that she said? She cannot. Right. And very often when all the dust settles from these debates, people remember stuff like 2016. People remember 1984 when Ronald Reagan made that joke about Walter Mondale's youth and inexperience. And that is the one advantage I think Trump had. And once again, um, you know, you want to go back to this idea. He was 2016 Trump up there. OK, 
for better or for worse, he was authentically Donald Trump. And it reminds you a lot of 2016, especially because on the flip side, Kamala Harris was incredibly inauthentic, reminded you a lot of Hillary Clinton up there. Now, um, there are some arguments to be made in favor of that, regardless of whether you think Trump should have approached it differently or whatever. I would point out he did win the election in 2016 with basically this exact approach to the presidential debates. Now, on the flip side, you could make the counter argument that, yes, that is true. However, Vince, it's not 2016 anymore. So the way Trump did that might be perceived differently eight years later now that politics has changed and he's more of a uh, you know, well-established figure, I suppose. And that's certainly true. But on the flip side, first of all, whatever you want to say about his personality tonight, at least he was authentic. Kamala Harris is not. And the fact that Kamala Harris, much like Hillary Clinton in 2016, although I would argue also much, much worse, she came off as very generic politician, right? Nothing but platitudes, nothing but rehearsed answers. If you want to say that Trump's kind of aggressive personality eight years later might not be perceived the same. It's also equally true that the American people are growing much, much more tired of hearing these platitude politicians. And that's exactly what Kamala Harris was as well. So again, you know, whatever you want to say about it, that's just kind of a slight advantage I would give to Trump tonight. Overall, again, just don't think this is going to make the biggest difference on the election. But uh, it certainly energized, I think, a large portion of the Trump base. They were very happy to see vintage Donald Trump go out there. Democrats probably were very happy to see what they saw from Kamala Harris. The closing question, however, is you have to point out Kamala Harris needed this debate a lot more than Trump, right? Because this was her opportunity to define herself. Did she do a good enough job to stop the stalling momentum and achieve what she needed to achieve, right? Because Donald Trump didn't really need to do much tonight. Kamala Harris, a lot more she had to accomplish. Would I really say she did enough? Not necessarily, right? Both candidates just did okay. But that said, I don't know. Let me know your thoughts, but those are just kind of my thoughts on this debate. Basically a draw, not going to make a big difference in the election, you know, whether you're screaming that, oh, this is going to totally change the race. Trump won tonight. No, he didn't. He did not win the election tonight. He also didn't lose the election tonight. There's a lot between now and November that's going to make the difference. I think it's really going to come down, especially in our polarized times to turn out to stuff like that. But did undecided voters really change their minds tonight? Probably not. That said, let me know your thoughts on what we saw tonight in the presidential debate in your comment section down below. And uh, be sure to leave a like on this video. Subscribe if you are new. And yeah, that's it. God bless and peace.